Welcome to Bloomberg Law. I'm Lee Pacquia. Today we're talking about trade secrets theft. Over the past couple of weeks, the media has reported on the rise in the theft of sensitive corporate information by foreign agents. But as some have pointed out, understanding these crimes can be uh, a tricky matter. Many companies, and individuals for that matter, don't learn that they've been hacked or that their intellectual property has been stolen until it's far too late. Joining me now from Washington, D.C. to discuss the problem and what can be done about it, we have Peter Torin. He's a partner at Weisbrook, Matisse, and Copley. In a former life, of course, Peter was one of the first attorneys with the Computer Crime and Intellectual Property Section of the Criminal Division at the Department of Justice. Peter, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Thank you very much. Okay, so I wanted to start off by asking why this is such a hot story lately. Corporate espionage, at least from my vantage point, is as old as the corporate form itself. Is the media simply making a mountain out of a molehill? No, I, I don't think the media at this time is really making a mountain out of a molehill. If, if anything, I think it's a story that has existed for a long time and the media is, is late to the party rather than making a mountain out of a molehill. There's been a lot of anecdotal evidence about the extent of foreign economic espionage. There have been a lot of government reports that have suggested that there's been a great deal of, of foreign um, economic espionage or economic espionage that's been directed by foreign governments, foreign instrumentalities, and foreign agents against U.S. corporations. Um, and it, Chinese, the Chinese government and Chinese companies have been perhaps identified as the main uh, actors in, in this on ongoing um, situation. We've had a particularly interesting development just uh, a couple days ago. The Wall Street Journal uh, reported that the FBI is now saying that uh, in one of their investigations in a particular instance of uh, corporate espionage, they've been able to come up with evidence directly linking uh, the Chinese government uh, to the agents that were working in this country. Could could you tell us a little bit about this case and uh, what exactly the FBI is claiming to have found? Right. Uh, this is the first case. You're, you're referring to a case um, that the indictment was unsealed sometime in, in February. Um, it involves a group in China called the, or a company in China called the Pangang Group, which is controlled or it allegedly is um, under the ownership or control of a state government in, in China. And they apparently, or at least according to the unsealed indictment, paid a number of former uh, employees of DuPont, as well as some other individuals, uh, many millions of dollars for trade secrets uh, relating to some DuPont, DuPont technology. What is uh, interesting or important about the case, as you suggested, is this is the first case that the government has actually indicted a state entity, in this case a Chinese government entity, uh, for state-sponsored corporate espionage. While in the past, uh, individuals have been, have been in indicted for um, acts of theft of trade secrets that would have benefited or intended to benefit a corporate entity. This was actually the first case where the, excuse me, where the government entity was actually indicted as well. So it's a, it's a very important case, um, but, but I think, it, as I've said, it, it's probably only um, the beginning or only the tip of the iceberg in, in this particular area. Right. Let, let's talk about this a little further. If it turns out to be true, how big a problem is state-sponsored corporate espionage, and what does it mean within the broader picture of America and China's trade relationship? Well, I, I think the, the, the first thing to really think about, to think about is to understand what, what state-sponsored espionage re really, really means, because in the Chinese context, you've got clearly instances or in the past allegations that the Chinese government um, in, in some way, shape, or form was sponsoring economic espionage, um, and, and this is the first case. But there are also many, many cases in which the government has brought indictments against individuals with that their their thefts were intended to benefit not necessarily directly a Chinese government entity, but were in, intended to benefit or theft was intended to benefit a Chinese uh, com company. So there are instances of state-sponsored espionage, but there are also, more importantly, many, many other instances of theft of trade secrets where it was intended to benefit um, a, chi a Chinese company. And that is really what we're talking about broadly, both the Chinese government's 
um, sponsorship or alleged sponsorship as well as all the other acts that were intended to benefit chi Chinese companies and the two are very hard to, to distinguish from each other. So we're talking about basically a, a new world of international relations. Do we have adequate laws, procedures and mechanisms to deal with this sort of problem? Well, I think we, we have some, some laws, we have at least one law on, on the book, the Economic Espionage, that is intended to cover this, the, these types of situations. Uh, the, the question really is, is, is the government devoting, well, I guess there are really two questions. The first one is, is the government devoting adequate interests or adequate resources to combat this problem? Uh, and that is very difficult to say and then really three questions the second question is can, is the law adequate and I would argue that the law is probably not adequate and the third question is ultimately are US corporations doing enough because ultimately it's really up to the US corporations to do whatever they can to protect their own intellectual property their trade secrets not only against international or against foreign economic espionage but against the more garden variety of ec economic espionage that is probably happening on a day-to-day -day basis so it's really comes down to a partnership between the government has to be doing more and clearly companies have to be doing more to protect um, their own trade secrets as well Right. You outlined an interesting relationship because this is ultimately a problem for United States corporations, not so much United States, uh, the United States government. I mean, the government wants to see corporations do well, uh, obviously for everyone's economic benefit, but this really relies on, on, on corporate America's shoulders. That said, uh, to what point do you see the United States government pursuing this, and uh, to what extent do you see um, corporations acting on their own self-interest? I mean, it's a, it's a fine line. It, 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 really, it really is a fine line because clearly the government doesn't have, especially in today's downsizing of the government, they don't have the, the resources to, to um, track and, and, and prosecute these, these, types, these types of crimes. Um, and the laws, Congress does have to uh, probably strengthen some of the laws in this area. The government has to change certain of their practices. So there are things that government can do, laws can be changed, other things that can be done uh, to protect, protect trade secrets. But at the same time, really, it, it, it's the responsibility of, of every corporation um, to, to be able to take steps, the all necessary steps, uh, to protect to protect the trade secrets and to the extent that they don't do so and are the victim of trade secret thefts or trade secret thefts I should say um, then the questions have to be asked perhaps by the shareholders certainly by other people within the company as to what they did and what they didn't do and why trade secrets worth X millions of dollars potentially hundreds of millions of dollars mm -hmm. wa walked out of the door with one of their former employees because given what's going on in the world, there's simply no excuse for, for corporations um, to not do everything that they can do to protect their trade secrets. Right. This is uh, certainly a nightmare situation for a lot of companies uh, working in the United States. What's the one thing you would like to see the government do? What's the one law or regulation you'd like to see passed in order to help your clients? Um, I think the, 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 I'm not sure if it's really a, a regulation or a law. I think that the, perhaps the most important thing at, at, in, in this area would, would be that the government, and it's probably uh, not atypical of many things, is, is the government has to uh, really coordinate it, it, its responses. And I'll give you one, one example. Uh, the way right now the Justice Department and the FBI is set up is that they have separate uh, divisions or sections that investigate uh, theft of trade secrets intended to benefit a foreign government, um, which the primary responsibility in, in that case for um, those th sorts of theft of s trade secrets falls on counterintelligence sections, both in the Justice Department and the FBI, whereas for the more garden variety theft of trade secrets, um, it it's ordinary AUSAs, U.S. Attorney's offices, different sections with within, the, within the FBI. And while I really don't have 
a lot of concrete evidence to point to. I certainly question whether or not there's a great deal of coordination between what is being done from the counterintelligence side, the way spies were, have been traditionally investigated, and the other non-counterintelligent investigators and, and FBI agents, because I think at least some evidence suggests that there may not be a great deal of coordination bet between those two different areas. Right. This is a particularly hard topic to talk about because a lot of the statistics uh, in terms of uh, how many incidents there are and, and it, what's getting stolen and in terms of dollar amounts, a lot of that is either classified information in government reports or uh, it's simply uh, not supported by any evidence that the public can glom onto. That said, what you can do is tell your clients um, how they can best protect themselves um, in, a, in an uh, evolving environment uh, such as it were. What are you telling your clients these days? Well, I think, I mean, you make a, make a very good point because, the, as you said, it's very difficult to understand the full extent of, 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 the, of the problems at, at this point in time. But I am going through the list of um, procedures, processes that a co company may have to better protect them and providing them with advice, counseling, and expertise into what additional steps that, that they can do to protect their trade secret. I mean, it's everything from conducting um, really formal exit interviews, for example, to making sure that um, employee, employees, former employees, don't leave a particular company with their, with their um, laptop computers, with their personal PDAs, and they've downloaded great deal of trove of, of valuable information. So there's a great deal companies can do to, to really from soup to nuts of the way companies approach this issue in training, in training everything that they do, the way they run a com company um, to better protect their trade secrets. And companies should be doing this because as with technology, changes in technology and, and such, uh, often the most valuable assets of a company are no longer the, the corporations, manufacturing plants, things like that, but their intellectual property may be worth many times um, the tangible assets of, of, of a company. So really they cannot most companies cannot do too little um, or too much i should say to protect protect trade secrets and intellectual property all right peter torin partner at law firm weisbrot matisse and copley based in washington dc thank you for your time today sir thank you very much for more information about this and other topics go check out bloomberglaw.com you can see our recent videos at youtube and follow our daily updates on twitter i'm lee pakia thanks for watching